You know, I love me a good clamp meter, and we got a new one from our friends at Finercy here. It's the Intelligent Clamp Multimeter. And this one's got some interesting features that I think we're gonna like. It has all your basic multimeter features here, of course. It's got a flashlight, that's neat. And you can save data and viewing. Well, let's get this thing open and take a look at her. Comes with a nice little instruction manual. What's this, a temperature probe? That's nice to have. Here's your multimeter probes, a little charging cable. Oh yeah, that's nice too. This thing has an internal battery and you know, I kind of hate having to change batteries out and then meters all the dang time. So it's nice to be able to just plug it in and charge it up. We'll get the little screen protector off of it here. Didn't come with a case, you know, that's kind of a downside, but I'll forgive them for that if it works out nice. Hit the power button, see what happens. We're gonna select English. Of course, with it not connected to anything, it's just kind of floating here. Hit the mode button and you switch between DC and AC amps. And you hit this button here, you can switch over to voltage, AC, DC voltage. And this is going to be your ohms or continuity or diode test. Here we have capacitor test and we have a frequency and the live NCV. I think that's uh, this guy up here where you can, you know, find live circuits. And of course, this button just goes back over. If you hold down the mode button, it actually puts you into a little graph mode. I think this is going to be really handy. I'm really excited to try that out. Oh, wow, that's cool. So you can do the graph in voltage as well. It appears to also work with ohms and capacitance and your frequency too. That's kind of neat. You hold down this button here and just like it says, it'll put a hold on whatever's on the screen. Just hold it down again and it'll clear the hold. And of course you hold down mode again to switch back to this view. And the size of this thing is really nice. The spring on the clamp feels nice. Here's the flashlight button. Let's hold that down and the little flashlight turns on. That's a pretty dim flashlight, but does it have any other modes? No, it's just on and off. But I guess it's still handy to have like if you were in like some dark crevices. Just to compare size of things, this attack life plant meter is what I've been using for a really long time. It's actually a really great meter. Let's see how it stacks up to the Fnursi. But yeah, you can definitely see it's a lot more compact than the attack life. Over here, you got your little USB charging right there. And I don't know, that, does that little hold maybe a reset button? Oh, there's a reset button right there. That's probably the LED light. In fact, let's plug this in and see what it does. No indicator there, but yeah, there you go. Oh, and it looks like you can't actually use the meter while it's charging. That might be a downside for some folks, but probably not really a big deal, really. And as soon as you unplug it, it goes right back to your meter. You can see the charging specifications says it's only one amp, so don't expect a fast charge out of this guy. Oh, and the resolution on this thing is a thousand count, so that's kind of nice. Here it states its dimensions there in Kami units. And it only weighs 194 grams. Yeah, it is nice and light. You know, I didn't even look at the instructions beforehand. The operation of it was really intuitive. I just started messing buttons and kind of figured it out. But here you can see like all the functions right here. You can pause on the screen and take a look at that if you'd like. Your ranges and accuracies are also pretty nice. You can take a look at those. Oh, okay, this is nice. If you want to just reset the thing, just give it a quick little press of the power button and it basically zeroes it back out. That's really good because, you know, these things are, are pretty accurate when they're measuring AC amperage, but it takes a lot to kind of get good accuracy with DC on these things. And that little Z up there just lets you know that you just recalibrated it with the power button right there. That's also good to know because you might accidentally hit the power button and, you know, you wouldn't want that to affect if you were actively reading something. Now, apparently there's a way that you can update the firmware on this guy. I might have to check that out. I'm not really a firmware updating kind of person, but you know. But yeah, that's all there is to it, really. Now I'm gonna go through and test out all the multimeter functions, but I really gotta try out this clamp meter first. I'm gonna connect the little clamp meter here to see if it's actually putting out the amps that it's saying it is. Yeah, that's showing the 16.1, 16.2, and it's showing 16.2 on here too. And this is a nice feature of this meter. You can actually see it ramping up the amps. That waveform feature on this meter is really cool. I like that a lot. Oh, wow, that's going. Kind of took off there for a second. Battery desulfation in process. Desulfation complete. What the heck? You can take a look at the little meter. You see what it did. It kind of ramped up, dropped down, and gave it a cold pulse or something. It's kind of interesting. And it's kind of cool. You can see like that ramp up there. Oh, and after the repair, we're already going at like 19 amps. That's pretty cool. We're getting some funky waveforms on the uh, amp meter there. It's definitely climbing up there. It's really cool to watch this amp meter go. I love that waveform feature on this guy. That is a little strange though. It looks like the meter might have ran out of memory or something because it's just flatlined right there. And let me disconnect it. 
And I'm gonna connect it back up. The meter is showing 19.7, this show on 19.5. Yeah, and the waveform on this guy dropped back down again. That's a little strange. Oh, that's kind of neat. You just hit this button and it'll do a little save. Not really quite sure how to reset the little waveform. Well, I think I just saw what it did is once it reads it and there's no change in the amperage at all, it actually kind of resets the level, the base level to like whatever it was. I don't know if there's some way to like give it an absolute in there, but it has something to do with its auto scaling. Well, it's been like two hours now and it's only up to 98%, but check out the amp meter. Like this thing is a trooper. It's been running this entire time. So the probes have these nice little protectors on them, which, you know, I really like to keep these things. Maybe not so much for the banana jack side, but definitely for the little probe side, which dang, I just tossed that one and lost it. But yeah, you definitely want to hang on to these things so that you don't, you know, go poking through your bags or into yourself or something and also prevent damage to your tips here. And man, these like little tips, are, they're real fine. Those are super pointy. And I hope you guys can see like how fine those things are. I mean, now yeah, that's like really sharp. I really don't need them that sharp for automotive work. I mean, not usually, but yeah, you know what? I'll take it. I'll try not to damage them. But yeah, obviously the probes, they just plug in down at the bottom down here just like that all right so we've already tested out the amp clamp so i've got some components here to test out some of the other functions of the multimeter already have it on voltage here so we can take a look at these batteries this one's showing 4.13 and that's how much this battery should show like when it's fully charged so that's nice this little fake 9 volt battery or rechargeable 9 volt battery actually not sure like what it does but we can take a look yeah it's right on 9 volts so that's good and man these things are so super sharp I kind of poked myself just a second ago with these things. You gotta watch out. I mean, it's awesome that they're sharp, so you can like really get in and like probe things in detail. But yeah, just be careful. All right, let's scoot over to ohms. Just to see, let's connect the leads together and see what the nominal resistance is. 0.2 ohms, that's pretty good. All right, so let's take a look at this one right here. It's reading 404 ohms. This one's reading 979. I think that should be one kilo ohm. This one's reading 975 kilo ohms, which is consistent because I think that's a one meg. That's reading five ohms, which I think this one's a 4.7. So, you know, there's a little bit of, you know, difference in there. Is that within the specs of the uh, meter that it claims? Probably. These also might not be very good resistors. I have no idea. This one's reading 97 kilo ohms, which again, at least is consistent because this is supposed to be 100 kilo ohms. And that's reading 1.4 ohms. We'll change it to continuity, just so you can hear the beep there. You know, that's actually nice and fast. That's nice. You know, whenever you're probing circuits with continuity, you want that beep to happen real quick. Diode tests, got a couple of LEDs here, and you know, they are diodes. Yeah, there you go. Shows you the forward voltage on that. Have a standard diode here. It's reading that correctly too. And we'll try this one, just for gets and shiggles. There you go. Oh, and you can, you can see it just barely lighting up the LED, too. That's fun. There you go. When it's like pitch black, you can see it lighting it up. That's nice. Okay, we'll switch it over to capacitance. Now, capacitance is kind of a funny thing with meters like this. It really depends on the type of capacitor and the size of the capacitor, how accurate they are. 1.1 millifarad. Yeah, kind of 1.2, 1.18. And as you can see, this is supposed to be a thousand microfarad. So, yeah, I guess I... Yeah, that works out if you do the maths correctly. And this little ceramic one, can't remember what it is. Let's see, that's yeah, reading like one microfarad. So the other reading is Hertz. Let's see if we can get something to read in Hertz here. There you go. Didn't even have to put the uh, neutral in. It's showing the uh, Hertz on the line voltage right there. Nice, that's perfect. And while we have this guy up here, we can also test out the little NCV. There we go, we have it on NCV mode. Yep, it's obviously detecting it. So there you go. That's nice and handy to have. Well, you know, overall, I'm actually really impressed with this thing. I think this is going to be my go-to meter for carrying around and like testing things out. I mean, most of the stuff I do is DC and being able to have a DC clamp meter to test things is fantastic. And I absolutely love this little like scale that it has. You know, for automotive stuff, you could do like a cranking test. You could hook it up to a circuit that you think has a parasitic draw and as you're like, removing fuses you can see that amperage current like drop down this thing is just super useful i really like it i know since they didn't come with a case i just kind of started stuffing stuff into this little pencil case here 
In fact, this pencil case is actually a little too big for it because this meter is really nice and compact. I should probably find something smaller to put all the little bits and bobbles in. But anyway, there'll be a link for it down in the description below for you to get one for yourself. I highly recommend it. Well, bye. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.